Thank you for joining us. My name is Jeff Gorman, and today I am joined with founder of Mathnasium, Larry Martinek. Hello, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, real well, Jeff. Um, thanks for having me on. Great. Like I said, Larry Martinek, the founder of Mathnasium, a bunch of learning centers for math all over the country and actually all over the world. How many uh, Mathnasiums are there these days, Larry? Well, in North America, there are 565. And we have a presence currently in 11 countries internationally. So um, that's a pretty good development for that's a pretty good development for a company that's only 12 years old. Yes, definitely. That's uh, any franchise type uh, business would be we'd be super happy with that kind of progress. And we're also going to talk about a little bit about Operation Math Lead, which is a show that's going to be coming on the web starting tomorrow. But first, let's talk about Mathnasium overall. Larry, you've been teaching math to kids for more than four decades. You really know everything backwards and forwards. How did you determine that there was a need for a place like Mathnasium? Well, I started teaching back in 1974. And in the summer of 1975, I thought it would be, what a great thing it would be if there was a place where kids could stop in after school or during the summer uh, to get some help on math because there's never enough time in, in math class to get things done. Well, that was 1975. I was uh, uh, right out of college. Of course, didn't have any money. So uh, that idea just kind of sat on the shelf. And then I went on about my business for the next 28 years teaching in all kinds of environment, in gifted magnet schools, in inner city gang diversion programs. And uh, then in 2002, I had the good fortune of running into uh, two gentlemen who had just uh, sold a, an after-school computer learning, um, learning center business, and they wanted to get uh, their foothold in, in the math business because they have, both having four kids, they recognize that the need for that is just like uh, present and isn't going away. And then from there, um, I contributed the math portion, they contribu uh, contributed the business savvy, and here we are today, five, 565 uh, franchises strong. Wonderful. Okay, so at your Mathnasium centers around the world, you see you help to kids to experience math in a way that they can't get in school, something called the Mathnasium method. Now, what are some of the ways, without giving away any special sauce, that they, they're learning at the Mathnasium in a different way than they would get in school? Well for kids is that when a student has a question they raise their hand and one of our instructors will come over and sit with them one-on-one -on -one and work with them for sometimes one minute sometimes 15 minutes depending on what the need is and so the instruction that kids get um, in the moment of their need is not to a group of 30 but um, to them directly one-on-one -on -one. and uh, of all the elements in the mathnasium world that make a difference that's probably one that probably is the biggest is that one-on-one -on -one instruction right at the moment of need. Also, our kids in our centers, when they finish a page, the page is immediately corrected by an instructor. So if there are any misconceptions about the, the content, those are corrected in real time before they go on to the next page. So, uh, so often kids in, in different environments um, uh, wind up doing making the same mistake over and over on multiple pages. And in our world, that just uh, pretty much doesn't happen. Right, and another thing you say is that uh, you're able to teach math in a language that the students can understand. How, how does that pretty much work? Because really learning math or being really good at math, it is kind of like learning a language, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, and the uh, big play in Mathnasium on language, um, take something as mundane as what is, the def what is the definition of half? Well, when I had to explain that to my son the day before his fourth birthday, I certainly was not going to use the Webster's definition, which is something like the division of a whole into two equal parts. You know, I mean, that's a perfectly good a dictionary definition, but not so good for a three-year-old. Yeah. So um, I had the wisdom at that, that point to think up the expression, four words, two parts the same. And as soon as I said that, he knew exactly what it was because he took a candy bar that he had in front of him that he cut unevenly before. And he said, oh, I should have cut it there. And he cut it perfectly in two, two parts the same. So that was when I realized, this would be back in 1984, when I realized that language was one of the stumbling blocks for so many kids. Also, take the word percent. Um, you know, the, um, some um, textbooks define it as hundredths or, uh, well, the mathnasium definition comes from the actual Latin meaning of the word itself. 
per means for each, and cent means hundred. So if you want to find seven percent of three hundred, you're going to count seven for each hundred. So you count seven for the first hundred, seven for the second hundred, seven for the third hundred, and any kid that can count is going to tell, oh, it's twenty-one. No decimal points, no fractions. I mean that that, that stuff does come later when the when the problems get more complicated. But like everything we do in the mathematics curriculum, at the core of it, we want kids to understand what the what the, the kernel, what the essence of this is. And um, the essence of percent is uh, the rhythm of hundreds. Every time you count a hundred, something happens. So eight percent of fifty. Well, you don't have a whole hundred; you only have half a hundred. So eight percent percent of fifty is half of eight, four. And from there, we build the, we build the rest of the world of percentages. But we start with kids often as early as second and third grade doing this because. Uh, kids who can count, uh, the language element is what carries them. So you're seeing ways that you can eliminate certain kind of stumbling blocks. Another way that you are talking about overcoming stumbling blocks towards math is as far as kids' confidence and their self-esteem as it relates to math. How do you, how did you sort of come up with that, that there was another important element, and how do you try to overcome those, those impediments? Well, the reason the kids have these impediments is you, know, you hear a lot of uh, people, adults even, saying, ah, I hate math, or words to that effect. Well, my observation over these four decades that I've been teaching is that people really don't hate math. What they hate is they hate being intimidated, they hate being frustrated, they hate being embarrassed by math. And huh. so if you address those elements right there, um, so what we, when kids come to our center, we start them off uh, with an assessment so that we know exactly what their strengths and weaknesses are and start playing to those strengths initially. So that when kids come to our center, it's not, oh, my God, i got to go to the math place, but, hey, it's a place where they want to come. In fact, a lot of kids want to have their birthday parties at Math Nazium after they've been with us for a while. Oh, nice. All right, so I want to also talk to you about your show, Operation Math League. That's going to debut mm -hmm. tomorrow, am I right? Correct. Now, is there, right at the beginning of the day, or is there a certain time that it's going to come online? Boy, you know what, I'll tell you, I... Uh, I did all the work on the technical end of it, but that um, I'm embarrassed to say I can't tell you what the, exactly when when it's going to. I'll tell you on Saturday it'll be available tomorrow. Exactly what time tomorrow? I'm not so sure. All right. Well, keep looking. If it, it's going to be starting tomorrow, why don't you uh, to talk about that? And also, um, how did you come up with the idea to have a uh, sort of a competition type show uh, for kids learning math? Well, we just, um, you know, with the world is, you know, seems to be, uh, there seem to be eight million uh, reality shows out there, and so the pop, the pop, uh, the formatting is popular. And, uh, uh, so. And it, within those, well, let's try those. Um, and the uh, reviews so far have been very nice and in terms of, you know, it's not, the, the kids are really competing against themselves, ultimately. Uh -huh. yeah, because yeah. Um, the, um, the, the nature of the work is that, you know, they've got to, uh, it was, it was the math is what the challenge was. Was it a bit of a challenge to take something like kids learning math as far as, you know, that's something that's usually done on paper and things as far as, and turning that into something visual that people could see as a, could, could translate well to television, as I would say? Well, the overall mathematics method, um, as I brought the, um, these elements to our program, there are five components, which are mental, visual, verbal, tactile, and finally, the last element is written. So uh, we've always emphasized those early elements, the mental, the visual, the verbal. So those play quite well on television as opposed to looking over someone's shoulder with a camera and, you know, and examining the written work that they're doing. So that, that's not what we're doing in this show because when you, when you see the competitions, uh, there is a whiteboard for the kids to visually see what's going on, but the essence of what they're doing is always is the mental, uh, the visual, and the verbal. And those elements um, are things that are, uh, predominate the mathnasium world and unfortunately, in a classroom of 30, 40 kids, you don't have the luxury of being able to do that on a consistent basis. Now, uh, one of my family's favorite shows is Master Chef Junior, and those are a lot of kids who are pretty much in that same age range. And when you watch the videos, the intro videos for Sky and Shauna and Max, you really just get to like them, and you just get to start rooting for them because they're very yep. relatable. Now, how did you how did you find those three kids and have them be the first three for Operation Math? 
Well, one of our centers, um, uh, two of the kids, and I forget which, exactly which two it is, um, these were kids who were inquiring about um, uh, the Mathnasium program. And when we did a quick initial assessment, we realized that they were really str struggling and would be absolutely prime candidates for this concept of math Operation Mathlete that we had. So it was a combination of their need and um, our need, and um, these were brought together just to kind of fate through, through us all together. Okay. And um, you were on the show as one of the math gurus, and there's a few other gurus. What is their role for the show? Um, the other three are uh, my hand-picked trainers for the kids. So there's um, Booba and um, uh, David uh, and I'm, gosh, I think, um, it's not right. I'm, uh, I'm just drawing a blank on her name right now. I can see her face. We'll, we'll see her on the show tomorrow, I'm sure. Yeah, you will indeed. Mm -hmm. So as we are going to kind of wrap this up, um, what is your goal for the uh, Operation Math as a web series? What do you want to accomplish as far as, you know, overall? Uh, the one big takeaway that we hope that all kids have from watching the show is the realization that no matter what their level of math is today, that through uh, appropriate hard work, that they can ach achieve uh, uh, success in math at the level that's consistent with what they want to do with their lives. So uh, some kids, you, know, you mentioned earlier, some kids uh, come with a, a negative attitude that sometimes that, you know, I just can't do this stuff. And what we want to show them is that, uh, and we'll do this over the course of the show, is that any kid, no matter where, where your starting point, uh, can be successful in math with appropriate training and with appropriate effort on the part of the kid. All right, sounds good. Okay, uh, Larry, before we go, anything you'd like to do as far as plug how people can find a Mathnasium and how they can find the show? Well, not surprisingly, if you go to mathnasium.com. Uh -huh, uh, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and from there, there's a in the right-hand corner, there's a place that says "Find a local center." Pop in your zip code, hit the go button, and all the uh, from um, the mathnasiums that are basically within about a 50-mile radius will show up in a list for you, and you can see which one is appropriate for you. And or the and there's a um, also there's an 800 number there on the website that can be called if you want to uh, get you know uh, bypass that process. So we're hoping that folks will uh, watch the video, um, you know, see something there that's intriguing to them, go to the website, and um, become part of the family. Okay, and how about the uh, how about the Operation Athlete show? Like, where the, where can people find that? How many episodes is the first season? Uh, the uh, first series that we shot were five episodes. Uh, what's available now and will be coming online tomorrow will be all the introductions that you saw, um, and then the the first of the five math challenges. Um, and then every two weeks uh, going forward, we'll be releasing another one of the challenges. And if we, uh, d depending on you know the audience response, we're hoping to you know to make this an ongoing series of uh, things that will inspire uh, kids all over the world to realize again that they can do the math. Okay, so that'll be on uh, your YouTube channel, I guess, Operation Math League YouTube on our, channel. On the Mathnasium YouTube channel, indeed. So um, easy to find and very powerful to watch. Great. Okay. Well, Larry, thanks very much for joining us. It's been great talking to you, and I wish you very much success. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Radio, Jeff. Bye-bye. Have, have a good one. Bye-bye.